know, the viewers say things like, this gives me something to look forward to, it gives me hope, it gives me something to live for. Well, I'm unemployed so that is yeah that's a that's an incredible challenge I have now worked in the music industry for about I keep saying 18 years but I guess that increases at some time but so somewhere between 18 and 20 years I guess um, I started at the Prince of Wales in St Kilda um, under the guidance of draw errors who I still uh, speak to and who I think of incredibly incredibly fondly and yeah a bit of a mentor to me um and yeah so just got into venue booking and have pretty much predominantly been a venue booker ever since um so venues like yeah obviously the prince and then the top in town um then boney um kelvin club for a while the post office hotel gasometer hotel um and then other projects along the way i was the programmer for the first White Night, the music part of White Night Festival. And then I've moved into festivals like Brunswick Music Festival, Changes um, Summit, and now, of course, Isolate Festival. Isolate came about because I, I, can, I never know which tense to talk about it in, but I either, I either am the programmer for Brunswick Music Festival or I was, I don't know. I have a, I'm a contractor, I'm a sole trader, so a number of my contracts I'm unsure about, um, you know, because I don't know what the state of play is in terms of music festivals. Um, but so the first week of um, Brunswick Music Festival went ahead as planned and then the second week was cancelled because of the pandemic. And so at the time I was programming a venue, which is another one of my contracts, and I assume we'll resume, I'm not sure. Um, I was programming a venue in Brunswick called Small Time, which is, has like a live stream element. Anyway, so I was speaking to a musician friend there uh, whose name is Murpire, and we were discussing, um, yeah, we just, she called me in with this idea of putting together a weekend of music. Um, it had a different name, it had a different format, but yeah, over the course of that phone call, we kind of, fleshed out ideas and I decided that it needed to be curated and that it would be 12 hours from midday to midnight um, on Saturday and Sunday. And we kind of just nutted out exactly how it would work. Some of these Instagram live videos that I've been watching have been fantastic, where they'll have a split screen with someone above talking to someone beneath. It was really real. It felt like I was there watching. And to have that instant uh, access to something that was happening at the time and being able to write this is awesome and seeing my name go up and screenshot it and keep it you know that's been pretty cool just seeing the fact that um streaming has been really embraced by people and i saw today the announcement that um of the new tv show that's coming back onto the abc you know sort of seeing things like that where um yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see that there's maybe new patterns of behaviour or, or that those patterns of behaviour that maybe were there anyway, people like watching, will like watching music, um, has been highlighted and now there's an opportunity for, for that to hopefully go on um, into the future. I think there's been really positive things like that. I'd have to say the Isolate Festival for me is a real standout. I think that the way that that um, was put together, you know, really, like in 10 days or something, I think that was put together is really impressive and it really shows the level of, um, you know, mutual support and respect that, that is alive and well in the music industry. And I think the fact that it started at a fairly indie level, but then every week as it progressed, you know, there were some more mini curated sort of festivals within it. There were some international performers. Um, it's all different genres. I think that the fact that that is up to, I think the ninth one now is, is crazy. I don't know how they're maintaining that pace. The values and what was important to the festival was that it was um, highlighting and promoting the artist. Um, 
So there are a number of streams and a number of, thing, number of things that are happening that uh, exist uh, or happen on various other platforms or other, um, yeah, promoting, a, you know, something else. But for me, um, yeah, it's been incredibly important just to highlight the artists themselves. Um, of course, there's the aid in the Isolade, and that's because it's a fundraiser, and that's incredibly important, and we're raising money for Support Act. Uh, Support Act is a very special uh, organisation, as it's in Australia. It's Australia's, the Australian music industry's charity. Uh, it has been around for uh, just over 20 years. And uh, what we provide is crisis relief, uh, in to the terms of support and also financial support, as well as funeral support, uh, as well and also mental health services for people who work in the music industry in Australia. So that includes uh, artists, uh, freelance session musicians, uh, crew workers, and also people who work in the industry itself, whether it be at a label or management, uh, all the way from small independents up to the majors. In terms of live streaming, you know, it's access for the audience. That's another um, big and central value of the festival. And for me, as with all my programming, it's about highlighting and giving a platform to marginalised um, voices. 70%, I think it's closer to 75, I think 74% of all acts that have performed um, have at least one female or non-male um, member. Um, which is kind of massive, as well as, yeah, um, giving platforms to people of colour, First Nations, um, people with disabilities. The majority of mob have, a, have this kind of innate um, sense of kind of responsibility to, to be out in the public domain and to reach further beyond into uh, places that you wouldn't normally be on, a, on any given Saturday. Um, it's really important for me to highlight all the different aspects of the community and the industry that are affected, So, which is why I'm partnering with various um, organisations and labels and publishers and um, record stores, etc., to curate because it, it sort of highlights the different parts of the industry and the community that are affected. And then in terms of the artists, in terms of our clients, um, you know, very different reactions from different people depending upon, you know, their own particular personal circumstances. So Missy Higgins, for example, has got two young kids, um, has been juggling the unenviable task of trying to keep them entertained and engaged, you know, locked up in a house and how many cubby houses can you build out of cardboard boxes in the garage, which she's literally been doing and is quite proud of her garage cubby boxes. Having Isolate has been an absolute kind of God send or it's been amazing because I've been incredibly busy but you know at the same time I don't have a job and so that is really scary because my identity is really tied up. It's shaken out a lot of people that maybe were in it for the money um, so I think generally these days if you're in music you're in it for the passion of it you, you love it you love what you do. Um, and I'm also isolating alone so that proves and presents another challenge. Um, I'm counting days and weeks in isolation by numbers of isolates. So we're heading into week seven, which means that I've now been isolating on my own for seven weeks. So, you know, that's just unheard of. Like I just, I don't think it's healthy for people to be alone for that long. And um, yeah, I know we're probably talking about music um, and careers and, you know, the profession more so than, um, personal stuff but yeah it's not easy so i think um uh, having a good social network as well uh is important for people anyone in any industry i think um and i could imagine in that in the music industry in a way you know that the fact that you are moving around quite a bit i mean my, probably the, the power of being in a band isn't it like in is that connection with people in your band you're sharing that experience and you're sharing the memories um sharing the highs and lows you know whilst it's enjoyable and that's what your passion is in terms of performing um there's probably another element there about taking yourself too far like you know how do you know when you've gone you know there's a limit to what you can do when i started isolate um you know people were allowed to be in the company of nine other people you know we were allowed to be in groups of 10 so bands were allowed to commune and allowed to and also we were allowed to go to certain other places. So, um, you know, people were performing from their studios and that wasn't um, an issue. But then essential travel only, uh, you know, you couldn't 
leave your house, you couldn't be with other people kind of thing. So people have to, um, yeah, adapt and just play with whoever is around them. Yeah, which means that they can't necessarily play with their bandmates, which is another thing that we would have just taken for granted that we'll always be able, you know, we're joining a band or creating a band, then we'll play as a band kind of thing. But all of a sudden it's just like, no, <laughs> you can't do that at all. You know, you can, but how are you going to adapt? And people, um, you know, have been really creative in terms of ways around that and pre-recording certain elements of um, bands, you know, creating basically a virtual kind of backing track that a performer can sing or play to live. I think it's really interesting. There's like ultra reality and there's virtual reality. And between the two of those, you can do a show without leaving your house. You know, I mean, I, for the larger bands, you know, the ones that won't go into these theatres with like one person in every three seats or whatever, eventually, if that's what they're doing, that's, that's what everyone's thinking is going to happen. I think it's a really bad idea. But here, if you go virtual or ultra reality, you can have, again, you go into a studio, a film studio stage, set up the band. The band's not there. The only people there are the ones that need to set up that basic equipment. Everything else can be virtual. The great things about these streams are that you do reach people in far-flung places. You, you know, um, so the discoverability is really incredible. Um, and so obviously the reach, but also there's no venue cap. So it's not like, yeah, that you can only fit, you know, three or 400 people if you're playing that size room. Like it just means that um, the venue size becomes infinite, which I think can be a really great thing as well. It's interesting to watch what the different people are doing. You know, whether they be DJs or, you know, bands or solo artists or whatever they're doing, it's, it's, it's interesting to note who's putting stuff out there and are they charging for it and is that worthwhile and who's not doing anything. You know, you wouldn't be able to go from, from 8,000 followers to 72,000 followers, counting today, um, without what's happened in the last few weeks. So it's quite an interesting opportunity. Certainly over the last decade, I think the industry's done a fantastic job in pivoting and retooling its business. At the beginning of last decade, 80, 85% of sales were physical. At the end of the decade, 85% were streaming. So it's it's moved. And we're continuing to embrace technology as new technology now comes down the pike, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Fortnite. I think music is, uh, and, and the labels and the artists are at the forefront of it. So, and again, I think that's been a big mental shift that we consider ourselves a technology business and a digital business. Obviously with music and art, at the heart of it but we we've kind of um un unlocked ourselves from the distribution method and, and realized that music is great no matter what the platform will be we just have to make sure we can monetize those platforms so the money can come back to the, the artists and the people who invest in the artists and we get lots of comments like that that people who you know all over the world um there's a guy called richard who's in um the UK who, you know, the time zones are so outrageous, but we drop our line up each week on Fridays at midday and he wakes up till 4am so that he can see the line up and he's just, um, yeah, so I think, and people are like, it's such a community and it's such a close knit, um, connected group. We're all in this together. We're all in the same position. And so the thing about Isolate is just that, you know, there's no headliner. It's not like the biggest names are going to play at the end of the day or, um, yeah, that there are support acts and then there's the main event kind of thing. Like everybody's in it together. You can be playing, you know, alongside Courtney Barnett on one side and, you know, I don't know. Media want a good news story. The amount of, like, I was speaking to the editor of Rolling Stone the other day and he said, finally, a good news story. I'm so sick of writing cancellation stories. As soon as we present them with some good news, like a tour reschedule or new music or a new video, it's like, wow, this is like back, you know, this is a month ago where, you know, they were drowned with so much great content like that, but now they're, th they're really fanging for it. They just want any good news that they can. I really, as much as I'm kind of creating this virtual experience and virtual festival, like I really, really desperately hope that the venues 
survive. Um, and, you know, my venue is in, my, sorry, my background is in venue programming. And so my heart really um, is, yeah, in the live music scene. And um, so, yeah, I just think it, they're just doing it so tough that it's really hard for ven venues to adapt and evolve during this time. Um, and pay the rent and, you know, subsist really. So I just, like, I really, really, that's my number one hope for the industry. Look at how the industry has been so, it's been flexible enough and resilient enough to turn it around and go, what are we going to do? Okay, we'll do isolate and we'll do, you know, lounge room sessions and we'll do deliver the delivered live and all of these events that have happened and they've turned it around and been flexible and gone, this is what we're going to do now. And wow. I'm hoping revenue streams will change and improve for artists specifically because it's really hard, like particularly if an artist can't tour, you know, perpetually, um, it makes it really difficult for um, artists to rely on sales of albums, which isn't really a thing anymore. It'd be nice if the big players in the music industry um, yeah, were supported as much as the smaller ones and that there was room for everyone.